dear friends in Christ, I greet you the blessings of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I hope that you are still found using your armor and your weapon, the Holy Rosary, to fight the battle in this month of October. In our last episode, I hope you were helped to understand and appreciate the fact that whenever we pick the rosary to pray, we are indeed praying because the rosary is actually an, a true prayer. Today, continuing with our episode on the theme, The Woman I Will Never Forget, I would like us to reflect on some of the litanies of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Dear friends, what is a litany? A litany simply means a series of petitions, invocations, or supplications towards an object or a person, usually led by a leader and with alternative response from a congregation or from other people. In the context of the church, the litany is an invocation to God or to some saints, petitioning them to have mercy on us and to pray for us. Dear friends, I would like us to understand that whenever we say a litany, we are indeed praying, especially if it is within the context of a liturgical celebration or within a religious setting. A litany is a prayer. The litany of the Blessed Virgin Mary falls among many of the litanies we have in the church. We have the litany of the precious blood of Jesus. We have the litany of the Holy Spirit, the litany of St. Joseph. Friends, the litany of the Blessed Virgin Mary, also known as the litany of Loreto. Loreto is a place in Italy where there is this shrine, known to be the place where this litany or prayer was mostly said and propagated. In the year 1587, Pope Sistus V approved of this litany to be used by the church during the praying of the Holy Rosary or during the intercession or invoking of the help of Mary in our lives. There are about 51 invocations in the litany of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And out of the 51, I would like to talk about 15 of them today and to help us appreciate why we have those invocations or supplications or eulogies for Mary. The first I would like to begin with is Holy Mary, Mother of God. Dear friends, there is no dispute surrounding the fact that Mary is the Mother of God. If Jesus is God and Mary gave birth to Jesus, then it qualifies without any doubt that Mary is the mother of God. And she is just not a mother, but one who is holy. Because Jesus, or that which he conceived in the womb was holy, just as the angel told her in Luke chapter 1, verse 27 following. Dear friends, let us also consider Mary, the mother of divine grace, mother of divine grace. Dear friends, in Luke chapter 1 verse 28, the angel greeted Mary and told her that she is one who is full of grace, grace that comes from God. And that is why the grace that was bestowed on Mary is divine. She is the mother of all graces. If God has found her worthy to fill her with her, his grace, then indeed Mary becomes the mother of divine grace. And so whenever we call upon her and invoke this particular elegy on her, she indeed prays for us to also share and merit said divine grace from God. The next I would like us to consider is mother most pure. Mary is pure. Why? Because when we read Luke chapter 1 verse 35, we are told that the angel informed Mary that the Holy Spirit will overshadow her and that which she will give birth to will be called Holy, the Son of God. This means that the Holy Spirit dwells in that which is pure, that which is undefiled, 
that which is not the abode of evil or filth. And so if Mary indeed possessed the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit dwelt in her, then she was a pure vessel. She was a pure instrument. And that is why we say she is mother most pure. And whenever we invoke this eulogy on Mary, she helps us to also become pure, a dwelling place for the Holy Spirit. The next I would like us to consider is mother most amiable. The word amiable means friendly, one who shows to be a true friend to others, who is kind. We see this in the life of Mary, and it starts as far back her first visit to Elizabeth. Because she was a kind person and a friendly person, she moved to help her kinswoman, Elizabeth. Next, she was also kind to the shepherd who came to visit her when she gave birth. She showed friendliness to them. Again, at the wedding of Canaan, Mary showed friendliness to the couple who were about to get disgraced because of the lack of wine. She showed that she was a true friend. Again, at the foot of the cross, Mary was there consoling her son. This is an act of friendliness towards one who is suffering. Again, Mary was with the apostles together with them and being with them shows that indeed she was a true friend and so mary is indeed mother most amiable she is a true friend to us whenever we call upon her the next i would like us to consider is virgin most prudent dear friends in the life of mary when we read scripture we will realize that she was one who acted at the right time and at the right place and did what is expected at when needed or at the points that she was supposed to act in fact mary we are told that kept all things in her heart this is an act of prudence when one reads luke chapter 2 verse 19 and 51 we are told that she pondered all things in her heart she was not one who was quick to talk she was not one who was quick to act she acted prudently and that is why we invoke on her as mother most prudence and so whenever you call upon this woman as one who is filled with prudence she also prays for the virtue of prudence upon your life the next I would like us to consider is seat of wisdom, in Latin known as Sedes Sapientiae. Mary is the seat of wisdom. We know that Jesus is personified as wisdom. In fact, he is the wisdom of God and he is wisdom. And if Jesus was conceived by Mary, if Jesus was born through Mary, if Jesus was in the womb of Mary, if Jesus sat on the laps of Mary, then Mary becomes the seat of wisdom. She is the seat that wisdom sat upon. Her womb became the abode of wisdom. And that is why we call her as the seat of wisdom. And she indeed was filled with wisdom because, as I previously said, she acted prudently she acted as a wise virgin who knew when and how when to act and how to do it the next invocation i would like us to consider or to explain for our understanding is mary the cause of joy mary the cause of joy Dear friends, when you read Luke chapter 1 verse 44, we are told that when Mary visited Elizabeth, she felt in her womb that the baby left for joy. Why? Because the baby had come into contact with the career of the Savior of the world. 
and so mary became the cause of joy for that little john in the womb again mary became the cause of joy for the shepherds who visited jesus who was lying in the manger because mary had given birth to the savior they also expressed their joy in the lord dear friends mary ultimately is the cause of our joy because she gave us jesus the savior of the world the one who came to end our sorrows our pains and our difficulties and brought us complete joy and so whenever we are in sorrow whenever we are distressed whenever we are down this mother gives us joy this mother causes joy in our heart when we invoke and pray through her intercession so indeed she is the cause of our joy and as i said in previous episode the rose flower is a symbol of joy and that is why it is mostly associated with the blessed virgin mary the next invocation to consider is comforter of the afflicted dear friends in hebrew the word for the afflicted is anavim and this comprises the poor the widow the neglected the abandoned those who are rejected by others and mary becomes their representative and we see this in a beautiful magnificat that the lord has looked down upon those who are proud and has raised up the lowly means that she is the voice of the afflicted the anavims and so whenever we say mary is the comforter of the afflicted indeed she is if you find yourself as one who is afflicted call upon the blessed virgin mary and she the queen of the anavims the queen and the comforter of the afflicted would always intercede on your behalf dear friends the next invocation or attribute i would like us to consider is mary being a spiritual vessel a vessel is usually a container that holds liquid or holds something or in when we want to personify it it is somebody who carries a particular quality or virtue and mary is that person who carries not just ordinary virtues or qualities but spiritual ones mary is that vessel that contain the holy spirit mary is that vessel that contain jesus the son of god and so indeed she is a vessel or a container of spiritual realities mary is also one who is embodied and known to have the qualities of kindness of love of friendliness of purity and of forgiveness these are all good qualities that she who is a vessel contains and so whenever we call on her as a spiritual vessel indeed we are asking her to also fill us with these spiritual qualities and make us a vessel or containers of such qualities in our lives the next i would like us to consider is mary being the tower of david the expression tower of david is found in the book songs of songs or songs of solomon chapter 4 verse 4 where the writer describes her bride as the tower of david her neck as the tower of david what is the tower of david in that text we are told that the tower of david was a place where trophies were kept where arsenals were kept where backless and shells were kept and so when we bring this understanding to mary mary becomes that tower where our spiritual vessels our spiritual weapons our spiritual arsenals and our spiritual trophies that we have won during our spiritual wars are kept or found or when we seek we can find and so being a tower of david it means that she has all these qualities within her 
where we can find the spiritual weapons to fight, where we can find the success to our wars and victories and the trophies, where we can find the backlash and shield to protect us from the attack of the enemy. And so Mary indeed becomes the Tower of David. Again, in the same book, Songs of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 4, the writer again describes her bride as the Tower of Ivory. Ivory is one of the precious minerals in the world. It is usually pure and whitish. And Mary is also known as a pure virgin, as I've previously explained. And also because of the whitest nature of the ivory, Mary is also known to be immaculate, one who is conceived without sin, one who has no traces of sin in her. And so that description given to the bride in Songs of Solomon chapter 7 verse 4 qualifies or becomes suitable for Mary if we describe her as indeed the Tower of Ivory because she possesses all purity, she is immaculate, she is magnificent and purely white. Dear friends, the next invocation I would like us to consider is Mary being the gate of heaven. Dear friends, Jesus we know before coming into this world was in heaven. And the passage that he used before coming into the world was the womb of Mary. And so the womb of Mary or Mary herself becomes the gate of heaven which opens for our Lord Jesus Christ to enter into our world. And that is why we refer to her as the gate of heaven. The gate that opens for the divine to transcend from heaven onto earth. The gate of heaven that opens for the divine to descend from heaven into earth. And so the womb of Mary becomes that gate of heaven. And so whenever we also invoke on her as the gate of heaven, we are asking her to open that gate for us. So that when we are also due or when we also are found worthy, we may enter that gate of heaven to be with our Lord Jesus Christ. The next I would like us to consider is the morning star. Mary as the morning star. Dear friends, astronomers usually tell us that before the dawn of a new day, you see that bright morning star announcing to us that a new day is coming and the sun is about to rise. Mary qualifies to be the morning star because she preceded the coming of the son of justice, that is our Lord Jesus Christ. She portrayed that Jesus was about to come into the world. She gave the way, she paved the way for the son of God to come. And so if Mary is the morning star that announces the dawn of our salvation, the dawn of the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, then indeed she is the announcer of good things, of blessings, of prosperity, and of favors upon our life. She is the morning star that opens the way for the brighter sun to shine upon us. Mary is also known as the queen of families. We know that the model of all families is the Holy Family that comprised Joseph, Mary, and Jesus. And Mary was the queen of that family. And so it suffices to say that all other families who model their lives by the Holy Family also have Mary as their queen. And so whenever we pray and invoke Mary as the queen of families, we invite her to be the queen of our families and to intercede for us. Dear friends, Mary is also known as the house of God. Why? Because in scriptures, whenever we refer to the temple of God, we realize that it is adorned with that precious 
mineral gold. This is very evident when one reads First Kings chapter 6 verse 22 where God instructed King Solomon to build that magnificent house for him and decorate it with gold. Again in chapter 7 verse 48 to 50 we are told that he instructed the same king to decorate the altar with gold. This tells us that the abode of God is always decorated with that precious mineral gold. And so, in reference to Mary, her womb became the dwelling place of Jesus, of God. And so it was suffice to say that the womb of Mary was a temple of God. And you wouldn't doubt that if the temple of God is always decorated with gold, then the womb of Mary must and necessarily be decorated with that gold. And that is why she qualifies to be the house of gold. The house of that precious mineral. The house that was the abode of God, the temple of God. The last invocation I would like us to consider is Mary, the Queen of Peace. Throughout the life of this blessed lady, we never saw her creating any friction, raising her voice, being aggressive. She was always that peaceful, that calm, that humble lady. I'll give you a few instances. At the temple, when Simeon gave her those prophecies, if we're to be one of us, we would have acted aggressively and attacked that old man, but Mary kept all in her heart. That is a peaceful person. When her son was being attacked, when they were beating his son, when they were doing all kinds of ferocious attacks on him, his mother could have also been aggressive and fight them back. But we are told that she was also quiet, peaceful, and praying for the son, though she was in pain. And so Mary qualifies to be a mother who is peaceful, a queen of peace. And so whenever we invoke her to be the mother and the queen of peace in our life, she indeed does that for us. Dear friends, I believe that these few invocations of the Litany of the Blessed Virgin Mary that I've explained will help you to appreciate the Blessed Virgin Mary, to love her more. And whenever you are praying this litany, you are praying with conviction that indeed Mary suits all those eulogies we are giving to her. Now, remember that when all others forsake you, there is this woman who is there for you. When all others break your heart, there is this woman who will repair it. When all others vilify you and condemn you, there is this woman who exonerates you. When all others forget about her, you and I will never forget about her. For she indeed is the woman we will never forget. May you stay blessed, peace and joy.